Hey guys, this is Tomek. In this video, I want to show you 10 tips and tricks when working with kubectl. So let's start with kubectl explain. That's the basic one where you can get the explanation for object or even a specific field in the object. And that's all fine, but let's have some use case. As an example, uh, let's assume you come across with some path definition and there are some fields you do not understand. For example, here we've got resources with limits and requests. As you can notice, this is under spec, containers, resources. So you can use the kubectl explain command to get more details. So in that example, kubectl explain uh, pod.spec.containers.resources. And voila, we've got more information with the explanation of both fields and even with some links to the documentation, official documentation to get more details. So as an example, we can copy paste the link in the browser and see more details. So that's very useful, especially when you're learning your ways around Kubernetes. Number two, auto completion. To check the installation details, you can execute kubectl completion minus h. Uh, it is currently supported under bash and zsh. Uh, for bash, it's pretty much the single line once you've got bash completion installed. I've got it enabled, so to show you the use case, you can, for example, double tap to see all your options. Let me create the namespace. Uh, let's call that my namespace, right? And let's try to list all the pods. So, for example, I can go with kubectl, get pod, minus n, Press tab button again twice to list all the nine spaces, including the one we've created. I select one of the nine spaces, double tab again to list all the ports, or press enter to complete the command. So that's auto completion. Number three, aliases. One of the most used one is alias k for kubectl. So instead of the full name, you can execute k get notes, for example, to get notes. Uh, but you can get more creative. Uh, let's assume you want to list all the ports from all namespaces quite often. You can you can create the alias kpa with kubectl get port all namespaces. And now when kpa is executed, you've got all the ports. Uh, just remember to store your aliases either in the bash profile or bash rc to have them and saved across your reboots and logins logouts. Number four, kubectx and kubeNS. Uh, those are two powerful tools that can be found in the GitHub repository. You can find the link in the description of this video. Uh, on the page, you will see the use cases, installations, etc. It is, for example, pre-installed in Google Cloud Shell. Uh, I've got it already installed. Uh, with kubectx, you can list all the classes which are configured in your account and you can easily switch between the uh, clusters. So for example, I've got dev Kubernetes cluster with just single node. And if I switch back to the production Kubernetes cluster, I've got different uh, set of nodes, in this case, three nodes, right? And with QPNS, uh, it's very similar, but with QPNS, you can switch and browse across uh, the uh, selected namespace. So for example, right now, the selected one is the default. Let's change it to, uh, to cube system. And once the cube system is active, if I execute kubectl get pods, I get all the pods from the cube system namespace by um, by default. So let me switch it back to default. And let's uh, check again no pods, and I've got no pods in the default namespace. Number five, that's cube PS1 for the smart prompt. It goes... Uh, very smoothly with the previous one. Uh, that's also external tool. So let me install that on my machine. First, I will uh, clone the repository. Uh, the link is also in the description. And let's check the installation. It's pretty much simple. All we have to do is the source the uh, source uh, bash script and change our prompt. So let me copy the prompt. I will source the script, which was downloaded with the git clone and change my prompt. Voila, and as you can see in my prompt, I can see my current uh, cluster and my current namespace. So if I try to change my current namespace to cube system, uh, notice that the prompt is also updated, so I know where I am. If I list some items from that uh, namespace, uh, I still got the information where I am, right? So let me switch it back to default. I can also switch the cluster with kubectx. 
Uh, let me switch it to kubectx production Kubernetes. And notice the prompt is also updated. So that's that's pretty useful. Okay, let me go back to my uh, original prompt and let's go to the next one. Number six, execute command inside container. So let's first create a pod with Nginx running. Uh, that's done. Let's uh, verify the pod is running with kubectl get pod. It is. So let's execute the command inside this uh, pod, or to be exact, inside the container of this pod. Uh, with service nginx status to check the status of the nginx. And as you can see, we can easily run the command inside the container. So that's pretty cool. But let's switch to another one. Uh, run an interactive pod. That one is very useful for troubleshooting. So uh, taking our example, we've got the internal IP of our nginx server. And let's assume we want to check if it's responding. So for that, I will create temporary a container or temporary co uh, pod called busybox using busybox plus image with restart never and running the interactive shell. I know that's a long command, but you can find it in the description of the video. All right, after a couple of seconds, we are inside our pod. So with that inside temporary pod, we can, for example, ping our nginx pod. We can even try to access the HTTP side via core. And we've got our responses, so it might be very useful uh, tool to uh, troubleshoot or to check uh, port, ports inside your cluster. Once I log out of this uh, container, it will be deleted, so it's like it was never there. Okay, so that was number seven. Let's go to the next one. Number eight, generate YAML files with kubectl. I especially like this one. Uh, to create the declarative files for my environment. Uh, with kubectl create deployment nginx, for example, we can specify the option dry run client and specify the output to YAML. And instead of actually executing the command in terms of creating the objects, the YAML definition is printed on the screen. So you can uh, redirect that to the file. And in that way, we've got our definition inside the file, which can be further updated, uh, which can go to the version control, etc., etc. So once this is done, we can apply uh, the changes in the file. So in this case, the deployment is created. And let's go to the next one. Number nine is kubectl div. So let's edit the file we just created. Let's change the replicas from one to five. And before we apply the changes, we can execute kubectl div specify the uh, yaml file or the folder and we will see what will change in this case the replicas will change from one to five so we can apply the changes with kubectl apply and the changes are applied number 10 monitor resources with kubectl top uh, you can check the top usage with the uh, nodes and also with the ports so uh, remember that with kubectl top pod, you will see only the pods from the current uh, namespace. So when you specify all namespaces, you will see the whole picture on your cluster. So that's, that might be a good command uh, to use for the alias if you check that often. So in this example, let's utilize one of the previous tips and create an alias KTP with kubectl top pod all namespaces. Having this aliases, all you have to do is to specify the alias and you've got the result. And the bonus one with tmax and watch to multiply your uh, terminal and to execute watch command. That is very useful work when working with Kubernetes. So the link to the documentation and to the installation guide is in the description of the video. Let me start the session with tmax. And we can, for example, multiply the screen and split it to two. Uh, we can also split that uh, horizontally. We can go ahead and split that again vertically. Uh, we can jump across the windows and execute different commands in the, inside of them. There are a couple of uh, shortcuts uh, you have to learn by heart to use the Tmax smoothly. I will try to put uh, all the ones I use in the comments section. You can, for example, make one of the windows the main one, the big one, uh, execute some commands and then go back to your older view. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what is even nicer, you can enable mouse support with set minus G mouse on. And with mouse support, you can even switch across terminals uh, with just simple mouse click. Uh, so for example, let's go to the top. 
this even more. You can resize the windows with mouse when mouse support is uh, enabled. So that's, I think that's pretty cool as well. Uh, very useful. Now let me close one of the windows. I have top one and bottom one. Let's clear that out and let's execute watch command on the top one. So uh, watch with minus n1 will execute the command every second. So in this case, it will be kubectl get all to monitor our resources in the cluster. And on the bottom screen, uh, let's try to do some changes. So right now I've got engine X deployment with our five replicas. Let's try to scale it down to two replicas. And you can notice how that is going on uh, on the top screen, right? So right now the three uh, replicas or the three pods are terminating and only two will be left. So once this is done, we can even delete the whole deployment and we can also uh, observe the status. Mm, so that is very useful. Uh, we can detach from the Tmax session, which still is running in the background. We can check it with Tmax LS and we can attach it back. So that's kind of cool trick as well. All right, so let me close the close all the sessions. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you've got more tips, please uh, share them in the comments section and check out my channel for other videos. Uh, thanks again and have a great day.